Welcome back to Economic Outlook. It's been a long time since I've been able to post a video entry to my blog, but now that I'm done with school, I have the time that I need to devote to writing the kind of quality articles that you expect. The first topic I'd like to cover is the recent bank stress test conducted by the Federal Reserve. This past Thursday, the Fed released the results of the stress test and found that 10 of the 19 largest banks in the nation all have insufficient capital should the economy continue to deteriorate. What I'd like to do in this entry is describe what the stress test measured, examine how banks will raise the capital they need, and finally look at whether or not the stress test is an accurate measurement of our bank's financial health. The results of the stress test released last Thursday after the markets closed are shown here. Several large universal banks, including JP Morgan, Goldman Sachs, and American Express, were determined to have sufficient capital as defined by the test. However, other large banks like Bank of America, Wells Fargo, GMAC, Citigroup, and Morgan Stanley were all determined to have insufficient capital requirements. Now, Bank of America had the largest gap at $33.9 billion, and several other smaller regional banks also had gaps above $1 billion. The question we need to answer is what kind of capital the stress test was measuring. Next, we need to see how banks will raise the capital they need to cover the gap determined by the stress test. And finally, we'll look at some of the arguments about whether or not the stress test is actually indicative of the true health of banks and our financial system in general. The purpose of the stress test was to determine whether or not 19 of our nation's largest banks could effectively weather a continued economic decline. The test determined that the 19 banks could lose as much as $600 billion in losses and write-downs if the economy continues to decline. This chart shows where these losses would come from. As you might expect, a substantial proportion of the losses come from mortgages, credit cards, and commercial real estate. All of these sectors are increasingly vulnerable if our economy continues to decline. The purpose of the stress test is to measure these potential losses versus banks' ability to absorb them given their current capital structures. Banks are required to hold at least $6 in what's called Tier 1 capital for every $100 they lend out or use to operate their business. Originally, the stress test was going to apply a more narrow measure of capital called tangible common equity. Later we'll discuss why this might have been a better measure of bank solvency. For right now though, the 10 banks in the chart shown above were seen as having insufficient Tier 1 capital, meaning they did not have $6 in Tier 1 capital for every $100 they lent. The banks now have by until June 8th to create a plan to raise this new capital. Next, we'll talk about how banks plan to do this and what challenges it will pose for their financial structures. There are several ways banks can increase their capital base. The first and most obvious is to issue common shares to the public. However, this requires willing buyers to purchase the shares. The second method is to convert what's called preferred shares into common equity. This can pose a problem because converting preferred shares can create substantial dilution and many of the banks who have preferred shares outstanding have sold them to the federal government. So if these banks were to convert these shares into common equity, it would give the federal government a large stake in the banks. Wells Fargo, Morgan Stanley, and Bank of America have all announced plans to issue more common stock to meet capital requirements. Citigroup is planning to convert several preferred shares held by private investors into common equity. GMAC is probably in the worst position of the five major banks listed above because they have the least ability to raise capital through share issuance and they also have a lot of preferred, preferred stock held by the federal government. It's likely that GMAC will have to convert some of these preferred shares or give the government a larger percentage of ownership in the company. Interestingly, all of the major banks listed in the report as having insufficient capital saw their share prices increase dramatically last week. Bank of America's share price soared after it announced its intention to raise the entire $34 billion it would need to cover losses on its own. Some analysts speculate that Bank of America may need to sell some of its assets, like Columbia Management, or potentially convert government preferred shares into common equity. These actions would increase Bank of America's capital base by over $28 billion, 
but would have the downside of giving the government a substantial stake in the bank and dilute the current owner's positions. Bank of America, however, quelled these rumors when CEO Ken Lewis announced that the company would not convert government preferred debt into common equity. Instead, Lewis announced that the company would convert some private preferred shares, divest assets, and issue stock. Lewis believes that Bank of America's diverse business units give the firm an ability to rebound alongside the world economy. For example, as stock prices increase, profits will grow with wealth manager Merrill Lynch, and improvements in the housing market would help divisions like Countrywide Financial. Now, the corollary to this is that if the economy continues to worsen, Bank of America is more vulnerable because of its diverse business units. What's important to note, however, is that the financial community is confident enough in the large major banks to buy their common equity issues. This means that there is renewed confidence in the U.S. banking system and that banks are able to raise capital effectively. This wouldn't have been the case just a few months ago. Now in our next entry, we'll look at why some people believe the stress test isn't necessarily the best measure of banks' financial health.